challenging episode would have probably have to be the luring lessons with Yu Hock. I think um, that was probably the first time um, I was going like right down to the techniques of luring and everything and there was a lot to absorb so it was more like a classroom setting kind of thing but it was classroom theories plus hands-on so um, and then like to add on to the stress <laughs> like it was like luring beside a super pro right so and I had to live up to expectations as well. So um, I think that was kind of one of the most challenging things because I was trying to uh, comprehend like all the theories behind the ring as well as carry it out all at once. Um, my favorite episode has got to be my first luring competition at uh, Raffles Country Club. Uh, I think the experience, even to date, I'm still very like, wow, yes, it, it really did happen because um, what happened was this luring competition took part in the Raffles Country Club. So they closed off the club and then um, for once it's actually legal to be fishing in the ponds of a um, country club. And then um, so what happened was we were all like assigned buggies and then you could just hop onto the buggy and then go to every pond and then like try your luck. Oh. Like when I first started out fishing marathon, it was more like me being very hungry to learn, learn as much as I could. And uh, I'm very thankful that during, like throughout the whole series, with through like every episode, I get to meet, um, you know, experienced anglers, and uh, every experienced angler managed to teach me something. So I think that was like being able to take away something from all this every episode. Um, I managed to gain like knowledge from people like like in terms of <coughs> my equipment wise, uh, I gain knowledge from people like Aaron, Uncle Lim, uh, when it comes to like pond fishing. And then uh, when it comes to luring, people like Yu Hall have taught me very well. As well as viewers um, online. So I do get people like dropping me message on Facebook saying like, oh you know, after watching this series, oh I think you should do this, I think you should do that, uh, do less of this and also. It's very nice to know that um, there are nice and friendly anglers out there who are willing to share their knowledge with amateurs like me. <laughs> okay, so Farmway Tree is one of my favourite fishing ponds that I like to visit. Uh, simply because it holds like sentimental value. I mean, Farmway Tree was like the first um, fishing experience I ever had. Uh, this was where I caught like what 20, over 20 tilapias and then at that point I didn't know uh, how a nuisance fish tilapia was. So I mean, my main main point was like I actually enjoyed fishing, and that was how I picked up fishing. And then secondly, it's because um, ever since my first experience in fishing, we've been coming, we've been frequent, like we come here frequently a lot. Then um, I started landing like my biggest catch, which is, was the chow praya, and then the grass carp and whatnot. So you can say that this is one of the places that I would like to come to to distress. And for the price you pay for the hours, I think it's pretty worth the yeah worth it. So it's like thirty dollars for twelve hours. So here at Farmway Tree, right? Even though the pond, the size of the pond is rather small, but you get a good variety of fishes. So you get like the red tail catfish, the chow praya, the patin, the grass carp, and even the alligator gar. So because the the pond is relatively small, right? You get a few like hot spots for the different fishes. Like the red tail catfish would be situated near where the palm trees are, um, where the netting area is. Then the chow praya and the patin, they're always lingering um, in the middle of the pond. So is the alligator gar. And then if you're aiming for like the kimak law and all, then they're the corners. So with all the different variety of fishes that you could possibly land here, the tactic comes with choosing the right baits. So there are people who use chicken liver, people who use like Taiwanese sausage, um, down to pellets, and even like the most 
uh, the most weirdest bait people would use would probably be a fruit, but I'm not telling you exactly what fruit it is lah, because I'm also using it. <laughs> so <laughs> hopefully I'll show you the results. Yeah, because I've tried it a couple of times when I was here and it worked for me. Uh, I landed my patin with it, so try guessing what fruit it is. <laughs> Secret fruit. What we normally use as bait because this is what we feed our fishes. Okay, so uh, in the morning it's actually quite effective. You want to try some? Okay, so what we're using for the bait now is chicken liver because chicken liver is like their staple food. Yeah. So there it is, tasty, yeah. So get it cooked. Yes, and we've got fish on. <laughs> Yay! Ta-da! This fish has like real fight in him, man. So this, what I got is a patin, right? Yeah. So roughly, you think how heavy? Uh? I think this one 8 kilo. 8 kilo? 8, eight, eight, eight kilo. kilo. About 7 to 8 kilo. So it's a patin, 78 kg. Um, caught on a chicken liver. So for the size of the pond, right? Like, don't ever underestimate the size of the fishes in here. Because the patin that we just landed, it's about 78 kg and it's already quite a fight. And, and then since we were here in the morning, we've been like watching the people around land their fishes and the fishes are pretty huge in size. So if you're you know, down for the adrenaline and you're just here for, to fight the fishes, then I think this is quite a good place to get an adrenaline rush, like pumped up and all. Yeah, man. This time I'll be sharing with you like my favorite types of equipment that I would like to always use during my fishing trip. So to, to start off, it will be like my favorite hooks, which is the owner cutting point. So owner has came up with like two series, which is like the needle point or something, and then as well as the cutting point. But the difference between the hooks is that the needle one is like this very linear edge to it, and then the cutting point is this like very diamond looking thing. Yeah, and this is like super security. Um, when it comes to hooking up fishes. Then for my favourite lures would be the Storm Soft Plastic. Uh, I use that quite a bit um, at the pond fishing at Pasir Ris the best. Uh, I love the movement of it. Then the jigging wrap. Yeah, I said like the jigging wrap like a thousand times at, um, on the episode with you Hawk. Because uh, like I repeated it like many times, I really love the movement of it in the water. And it attracts and entices all your peacock bass and demenses. Uh, my favourite rod through the whole episode would definitely be the Trickster. Um, I really like how flexible the rod is uh, it, and how it can be used for like luring as well as pond fishing and anything like that. I really like how sturdy yet flexible it can be because you know how some rods are like extremely stiff and you don't really get the light rod action um, the feel of the light rod when it comes to fighting a fish my favorite way would definitely be the Daiwa Caldea yeah um, it's proven to me to be a very smooth reel as well as a multi-purpose reel because I went offshore with it I went luring with it I went pond fishing with it I think throughout the whole series, the experience was great. I mean, for me as an angler, for me as a budding host, I guess. It was more like a, a learning experience and a learning journey for everything. Um, and I mean, I wish that I had more time. Then at least I can learn more and gain more exposure, meet more people as well. But I think overall, in terms of like support, I had good support. Uh, and I have met people who are more than willing to share whatever they have grown to me. So I can say I'm very lucky and blessed in a way to be the host of TFM. Yeah.